Doom seeds. What the? Oh, why did it have to be now? Let's wait for a while. What is this stuff? I heard he'd lost his memory, but I think this is more a case of not knowing squat. Don't act like a know-it-all just because you know a little more than I do. I guess when you have amnesia, you don't just lose your memories, you lose all your knowledge, too. <laughs> you are one seriously annoying bastard, you know that? If you keep this up, I'll throw both of you out into the Doom Seeds. Yeah, well, he's the one who started it. Crocell is going overboard because you overreact to everything. <clears throat> Doom seeds bring calamity. Huh? When Doom seeds fall, crops stop growing and ripening, and all wizardry stops working. Commons lose their effect, too. To the people of Lonsheim, these mysterious falling seeds that destroy Khan spell doom and catastrophe. That's why they're called doom seeds. How long has this been happening? Frequent seed falls were first witnessed about three years ago, just before the beginning of the Civil War, I think. Historical records indicate that this has happened many times in the past, though. We still don't know what causes the Doom Seeds to fall, but it's certainly related to Khan somehow. Doom Seeds negate the effects of all the Khan in its vicinity. So that's why you can't use wizardry. It doesn't look all that bad at first glance. True. But apparently, if you stand out in it for too long, your strength begins to fade, and you eventually die. Unfortunately, I really don't know very many of the particulars, though. Still, it's eerie, but kind of pretty. It never fell on Highwind Island, so this is my first time seeing it. It's a phenomenon that you see whenever there's a great battle. I think the main reason that they're called Doom Seeds is that they seem to herald disaster whenever they fall. 150 years ago, Lantheim was ravaged by war just like today when there was an uprising of nobles. It was called the Ruhalt Civil War, and the records of the day say that Doom Seeds fell then too. This time, the Doom Seeds started falling just before Schwenzite launched the war. It was almost as if it were some kind of signal. Maybe this is just nature's way of punishing humanity for treating the Earth so badly, trampling it underfoot with its wars. If that's true, is there any way to stop the Doom Seeds? As for that, I don't know. All I know of is a legend that says. The Magna Carta shall stop the Doom Seeds. The Magna Carta? Wasn't that Strauss? Yes. Magna Carta means the greatest Carta among all Carta. Lord Strauss was definitely a man whose power warranted that name. Because of that, powerful people all around the world are referred to as Magna Carta to this very day. Still, even if there was a Magna Carta, we might not be able to do anything until we find out how to stop the Doom Seeds. Come on, that stuff is all made up. Every soldier who's made a name for himself on the battlefield gives himself the title of Magna Carta, you know? You might be right, but among those people who received that title, there really was one amazing wizard. The seed fall isn't letting up. Anyway, we're in trouble here. We don't have any drinking water and we're out of emergency rations, too. You're right. If we drink water that has seeds mixed in, we'll lose the ability to use wizardry for a while. 
Being exposed to the seeds for a little while won't kill us. We should hurry to Kotamare and ask the Mare people for assistance. Yes, but if we go there right now, the Mare might see our arrival as a bad omen. It's because the Mare believe the seeds are falling due to the Civil War. As a result, they hate humans. Who are the Mare? Oh man, I have to explain this too? What a pain. Nobody's asking you. The Mare are a race who live in Kota Mare. The Mare closely resemble humans in appearance. Compared to seeing a Trewa for the first time, someone seeing or interacting with one of them would feel no unease. However, their growth rate is much faster than a human's. They reach adulthood in about ten years. Wow, I had no idea. The Mari are short-lived, with a lifespan of about 40 years, but they maintain their youthful appearance until the day they die. But if they find out that we're soldiers, no way are they gonna help us. What are we gonna do? Well, you have a point. The Mare despise fighting. Why don't we hide the fact that we're with the Southern Army until we enter Kotamare? I intend to propose a treaty with the Mare people, so maybe it would be best if we were to meet them frankly, openly, and honestly. Yeah, but if they decide to turn us away at the gate, it's all over. Or they might throw us out while the Doom Seeds are still falling. <sighs> you have a point. Chances are, they probably won't let us in even if we are honest about our identities. Zephy. What do we do? Travel incognito? I feel terrible about deceiving them, but not seeing their chieftain is out of the question. If we sit here, we can't move forward, and we can't go back either. I'm overwhelmed with guilt, but I'm afraid this seems to be our only way of getting the Mare to let us into the village to meet with their chieftain. It looks like the seed fall is weakening. Let's set out soon. Okay, hello and welcome back to Magna Carta 2. I'll take care of it. Now that we are in Kotamari, you can see that it is quite the map. So we have a whole new area to explore. We're going to have lots of things to do. Our current objective is to head on over to Kotamari, which is on the bottom of the map. However, we have four side quests that we're going to do before we head that way. So we're going to want to talk to this obvious merchant. And he's going to have a couple of favors to ask us. So the first one is to take care of some Northern Forces soldiers who took his merchandise. And they have their own camp, which is on the map that we need to go to. And although they talked about how dangerous the Doom Seeds are in length, uh, at the moment they're really not going to harm us much. Your wizards aren't going to be able to really generate any sort of con, but they can still attack, which uh, should help out a little bit. And you're not going to drain any HP, or your strength isn't going to be down or anything like that, so there's nothing to worry about. The enemies in here are a little bit tougher, they're level 16, so a little bit more on par with our level. So we want to go around and fight enemies where we can. And there's one Mare gentleman out here, we're gonna come and talk to him later, so keep his location in mind. And as soon as you talk to him, uh, you can see that they really are not very welcoming at all. Although he's not hostile, which is nice, we didn't come here to... Uh, kill the Mari people. It finally stopped. Not being able to use wizardry is so damn inconvenient. Thank goodness. We'll be at Kotamari soon. Yeah, and to top it off, the cubes haven't worked at all since we entered this region. 
General Headquarters is probably worried that the Princess has gone missing. We can't do anything about that right now. We will have to report in later. Okay, so once you advance on towards the first exclamation point, the Doom Seeds will stop. So now everybody can use their wizardry. And at this point, I think I'm going to switch out Crocell because this is a water dominant area and he's not going to be able to generate a whole lot of con because fire is not strong in this area at all. However, all right, wind uh, will generate here, so I'm going to switch in Zephy for now. Crossal has definitely had his time to shine when we were at Old Fox Canyon, so we'll bench him for a little while. Yes, I avoided the attack. Until we can go to an area where he's going to be able to make a little bit of use uh, of himself, of course. And again, these enemies aren't terribly difficult to defeat. And we are going to be running into a couple more variety of enemies, but I would recommend fighting them when you do see them. There are also ice flowers that you can pick over. But they don't seem to really house much in terms of items. So I try not to kick too many of them over because it seems like a waste of time, but it is kind of neat to see ice flowers growing in the marsh. Because it doesn't seem like the area is terribly cold, but I guess it's very wet. So maybe that has something to do with it. This area is very beautiful, I like it. It's kind of dark, but it's dark in a very beautiful way. I'm heading over towards the Northern Forces campsite. You can see uh, it's this way here. And it looks like the Northern Forces have really pushed back a lot. Because not only were they all over Old Fox Canyon, but they have their own little place set up here in Kodamari, which they really have no business doing. I'm surprised that the Mari people just let these guys do this. Unless, of course, they just got here. Uh, from when we had pushed them back at the uh, battle. See what you're doing. Yes. But you would think that since the Mari people don't like humans, they wouldn't just let the soldiers sit around with a tent in their marsh. Yes. Either way, that doesn't really concern us. We haven't even really met with the Mari people this yet. We'll just, just worry about taking care of these guys. For the sake of the merchant since they stole his goods. Stealing isn't nice. You can't steal things from hard-working merchants. Maybe they needed rations or supplies. And again, you don't have to fight all these guys. You can pretty much take the treasure out of that treasure chest there and go. But we're gonna have to come back here again later on, so... I think it's probably a good idea to clear these guys out now so I don't have to worry about it when I get back. Plus, I may or may not be able to level up if I keep fighting everything like this. Everything that stands in my way. I think that takes care of them. I'm gonna pick up my loot. I should have a lot of money by now as well. And that's gonna be good when we go to pick up new equipment, which we will be doing when we get to Kodamari, so... Keep an eye on your total gold. Because I do believe you'll need about 30,000 if you want to buy everything in one straight shot without having to grind money or go back for items later on. So now that we have the merchant's items, we're going to go back to him. It's going to be a little bit of walking around the marsh for the first little while. This is a big area and we're going to have a lot of quests spread out all throughout, so... We'll just have to get used to all the traveling. If there's an opportunity where I'm able to cut some of the traveling out, I definitely will. To make things a little bit easier on all of us. So we get 800 experience and 500 sit. Which isn't a bad reward for a short quest like that. Now we can speak to him again, and he's going to want us to get some mushrooms. Four suspicious mushrooms. They're the purple ones that look like this. 
And of course we're going to need Judo in order to harvest. So have him as your active member. And then go up to the Suspicious Mushrooms and harvest them. And again, this is going to be the same harvesting minigame that we were playing before. Yes! When we I had gathered the grass on the beach at Highwind Island. Now there are a bunch of these mushrooms everywhere, so luckily we're not going to have to go very far in order to harvest these. There's also another type of mushroom around if you haven't yes, noticed, I did it. but because we haven't been asked to gather them, we're not able to harvest them. But just keep their location in mind since we will be gathering some of those later. This is mushroom number three, and then we only need one more. And you have about eight seconds in order to harvest these, so you have lots of time. Yes, I did it! Kind of lets you practice a little bit at the harvesting minigame if you haven't quite got the hang of it yet, so that's nice. Now where is our last one? Here it is. There should be some farther up the road as well if you want to kind of explore a little bit and uh, then yes, I did grab the mushrooms and go back later on if you feel like doing some you know, grinding early on or whatever, but I just choose to do this stuff now because we're going to be going that way anyways, but it's going to advance the story. I do believe that you can do these quests for the Avi's merchant after you get to Kotamare, but because we're going to have a lot of side quests when we get there, it's nice just to take care of these now so we don't have to worry about it at a later date. Because you definitely don't want to forget about them either. This is giving us a very prime opportunity to level up as well. Now, the merchant has two more quests for us. But I think at this point, it's wise for me to save and end the video because it's getting quite long. So next time, we will continue on in Kodamare. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and I hope that I will see you next time.